Thanks for the uh, Staglin family for this you know, the opportunity to introduce our work here. And also, I greatly appreciate the support from Johnson & Johnson and uh, Emerald. So it is extremely important to our you know, the ongoing uh, research in my lab. So uh, my lab interested in exploring the potential, potential you know, the, uh, active antidepressant uh, for the depression treatment based on the understanding of you know, the resilience so here's some you know the background information about uh, you know the depression, but you know the I would like to emphasize just two facts. One is you know the currently antidepressant uh, take several weeks to reach the clinical you know the or treatment efficacy. This actually is really bad news to the you know the patients with high risk of suicide. And the, you know the second is stress play a very important role in the precipitation of you know, the uh, depressive episode. So many you know, the animal models based on this you know, the point. And you know, the, very interestingly, there is you know, the clear individual difference in response to stress. You know, prolonged you know, stress-induced depression in some people, but not in others. So we call it susceptible and resilience. Uh, we're interested in the understanding, you know, the, what's the resilience, you know, going on in the brain. But you may, you know, ask questions, say, okay, hold on. So why are you interested in resilience? Resilient people kind of, you know, perfectly normal. They may not respond to stress or they, in, you know, the sensitive to stress. So to understand the resilience, we turn to the animal, uh, animal model called the so, so, so chronic social defeat model of depression. We use the, you know, the experimental, experimental mice, you know, the put into the uh, aggressive, big aggressive, you know, the mice uh, home, home cage, let them fight five minutes, then the, you know, the separate by the divider. They can see and smell each other, but they, you know, the, uh, this kind of, you know, the very stressful condition. Then next day, we use the, we meet the next, you know, the like new aggressor. We keep doing this, you know, for 10 days. Then after, you know, 10 days paradigm, chronic social defeat induce many symptoms, many, you know, the depression-like symptoms. Very importantly, these symptoms are reversed by chronic, but not acute antidepressant. This, you know, just like in human uh, patients. So then the, you know, the up to 10 day paradigm we measure the social interaction. Uh, we have, you know, the, we hold the uh, aggressor, this social target in the metal mesh. So we have, you know, the interaction zone and the corner zone. So uh, without target, the mice walk around. So with target, the control mice spend a lot of time in the interaction zone. But defeated mice actually, you know, the spend less time in interaction zone, oppositely, they, you know, they spend, you know, the significantly more time in the uh, corner zone. As I mentioned, you know, the, there is still, uh, you know, the individual difference in response to stress. So what we found is, you know, the, about 70%, uh, you know, the defeated mice, so spend less time in interaction zone and more time in corner zone. While the other, you know, the rest of defeated mice, actually, you know, they don't have this, you know, the social avoidance phenotype. So what's going on in the brain of this, you know, the susceptible and the resilient mice? So we focus on the, you know, the emotion-related dopamine circuit. So first, we load, you know, the glass electrode, you know, into the VTA to measure the electrical activity in the, you know, the anesthetized, you know, alive animal. What we found is, you know, the in vivo, you know, the electrical activity pattern called, you know, the physical firing was increased in susceptible animal, but not in the resilient animal. So it seems like, you know, the, the, this firing pattern is very important. So next we want to understand what's the function of this, you know, the firing pattern 
in freely moving animal. So we use advanced optogenetic technique. So we, you know, the micro in, micro infused the uh, uh, vector vehicle and express the light sensitive channel called the channel rhodopsin into the VTA and use blue light activate these channels and mimic the, you know, the physical firing. Then do the behavior test with the, you know, the optical fiber, you know, attached to the brain. Then we can do the uh, interaction test or other, you know, the behavior test in freely moving animal. So what we see is actually, you know, the blue light can reliably, you know, the induce burst firing or, you know, the physical firing and also other uh, firing pattern uh, in the, you know, the in vitro brain slice and also in vivo alive animal. So kind of, you know, the way ready to move to the behavior test. So uh, only, you know, the uh, physical firing can induce, you know, the depression-like avoidance behavior and also induce decrease the, you know, sucrose preference. So then, we kind of, you know, the, from this, you know, the finding suggests uh, this ventral tegmental area, dopamine neuron, looks like, you know, the have important, you know, function and a good target. Then we try to understand uh, why, you know, the, this neuron firing was increased in susceptible animal. Then we focus on the ion channel proteins because they are, you know, the good drug target. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, the firing was increased in susceptible animal, but not in the uh, resilient animal. Resilient animal, you know, firing is normal as compared to control. But what we found is, you know, the, the one channel protein called IH, which is associated with the regulation of physical firing. So it was significantly increased in the uh, susceptible animal. So this finding suggests uh, Increase the IH, you know, the induced higher pathological firing. Then the, you know, the make the mice depressed. What surprising, uh, surprisingly, we found, you know, the uh, even bigger increase, big IH increase in resilient animal. So this increase is supposed to even, you know, the increase more firing, right? Induce more firing. But actually, you know, the, as I mentioned, the firing is normal. So this means, you know, the, uh, these neurons supposed to have, you know, the other mechanism. They, you know, the counteract this, you know, the increase. So accordingly, we found potassium channel increased only in the resilient animal. So this finding is very important because uh, this finding, you know, the suggest uh, the, you know, resilient animal you know, the not insensitive to stress. Actually, they, you know, the actively use more, you know, the channel function, you know, the kind of, you know, the uh, to cope with, you know, the stress condition and uh, avoid developing, uh, you know, the depression-like behavior. So based on this finding, our, you know, the hypothesis is uh, IH inhibitor and also, you know, the potassium channel opener, both are antidepressant. So we try to, you know, the test this hypothesis. So we, you know, the micro-infuse the uh, IH inhibitor specifically to the VTA, you know, the area. Then, you know, the, the antidepressant, uh, no, IH inhibitor uh, reverse the social, you know, the avoidance behavior within one hour. This is, you know, the very different from traditional antidepressant. So they take weeks. Then this, you know, the single dose induced antidepressant effect last two weeks. And then the third week back to normal, back to the, you know, the avoidance behavior means, you know, the, the depression symptoms come back. So this is really like, you know, the drug effect. Then importantly, we observed the, you know, the same you know, the rapid and the long-lasting antidepressant effect with IP injection, just like a single dose. 
So this is more important. Then we, you know, the back to the, you know, the uh, protection channel opener. So they have the similar effect. You see this avoidance behavior is fully reversed by the, you know, the uh, protection channel opener. But this one is even sooner. I mean, like, you know, the five minutes infused to the VTA, the avoidance behavior is gone. So then the, you know, the, we, uh, this, you know, the, another measurement. So we also measure the sucrose preference. This effect also reversed. So we also, you know, the, see the similar effect in the IP injection with the uh, potassium channel uh, opener. So in summary, our finding shows the physical firing encode the susceptible phenotype in other words, the physical firing determines susceptibility or, or versus you know, the resilience. And also I, IH inhibitor and uh, potassium channel activator, they are you know, the rapid antidepressant or long-lasting antidepressant. And more importantly, so the potassium channel activators, they you know, the mimic the naturally natural process of you know, the active resilience. So we expect they have you know, the less side effect and the more effective. So I really you know, the appreciate the support from Mount Sinai Brain Institute and the National Institute of Mental Health. And the, you know, the, uh, the, the funding I just mentioned is mainly supported by the Johnson and Johnson and Embro and also my collaborator, Jane Wei, and uh, Scott Russo, and Carl Desros. This is my research team. Yeah. <laughs>